Shalom, Yashallah, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory <clears throat> to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Yasharallah. Kahalayim Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Harakakodash, for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwap that's keeping the faith in the works. Y'all keep at it. It's your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. This is the book of Syrac and the Apocrypha, which is um, hidden books. All right, Syrac, also called Ecclesiasticus, chapter 29 and verse 21. The chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and in house to cover shame. All right. <clears throat> the devil knows this information and he's used that tactic to take down kingdoms before. One specifically one specific kingdom is ours, right? Um the siege of seventy AD. All right. But the most high bringing that back on these devils. It's the book of Isaiah chapter forty seven, verse one. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, but thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. All right? The Most High is visiting this place. And Yahweh Ratazah is falling, man. All right? Most High willing, this place is falling and will be done extremely soon. All right? Same book, same chapter, verse 15. Thus shall they be unto thee, with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. And nobody is going to help this place get back up. Right? One main method of this place falling is through a famine. Right? Ultimately, the Most High say he's going to plague this place on out. But one of those plagues is a famine. Right? <clears throat> but see, this is the thing about Esau. Like I said, he used that tactic before on kingdoms. This dude even uses it, uses it on his own. Has no problem doing it. Right? That is a part of this great divide that's going on in this place between the haves and the have-nots. Basically, if you got a certain stature in this world, you got more access to things than people who don't, right? And then it trickled all the way into the military, right? And and to be real with you, it been that way. I was in the I was in the military myself, and I could speak, right? I could speak for I could speak for what I know. If you in the military, man, the only way you really get looked out for is if you go to war and get hurt. Right, or you get ranked. That's the only way you get looked out for. And I'm saying in the military and outside of it, more so outside of it. Like when you done with it, that contract up, and you make your make your mind up, you don't want to deal with it no more. All right, but I'll let the video play and I'll be back. to serve and protect this country have been facing a major challenge right here at home. Thousands of U.S. troops have been plagued with food insecurity and have been finding it hard to provide for their families, especially during the pandemic. Independent journalist Ashley Banks tells us why. Thousands of active duty military members in service at home and abroad are struggling to have their basic needs met. Roughly 160,000 of them are facing food insecurities and are finding it hard to provide food for their families. Feeding America, an organization geared toward coordinating work with food banks across the nation, says food insecurity is an issue in America and the military is not exempt. According to activists, military members have been dealing with this issue for years. However, it has worsened during COVID pandemic. See, hyperinflation and the cargo shortages ain't helping the, ain't helping it the situation either. Right? And like this lady gonna say in this video, when you hear Congress or you hear this place saying they stashing away or they signing some bill to supply 
the military will fund. They're not talking about the soldiers. They're talking about equipment. All right, that, that's it. They're talking about weapons. They're talking about gear. That is all. <laughs> all right, because like I said, if you got rank, you get more money. Right, but even on that aspect of it, you really kind of have to be clicked up in order to receive certain uh, certain perks, right? Certain perks to, to be able to move up in that place. Like, you really cannot. If you, how can I put this? If you don't have corporate dreams in your, in your head, Right, you you you're not willing to swallow pride in a sense, and I when I say pride, I mean like the the belief that you have in yourself, like of who you are. Right, if you're not willing to put that aside, it's just like a job. How you can't really be your full self around these individuals at a job, right? If you want to move up, the military is a job, right? It's not, it's not it's not something that a father passes down to a son. This ain't that. This something that nine times out of ten, people join the military to get some form of opportunity financially, whether it be school, right, or whether you try to make a career out of being in the military. That is it. And nobody joined the military to go, well, when I say nobody, I'm talking about Israelites, you so-called blacks, so-called Native Americans, so-called Hispanics. And all our brethren around, the, well, yeah, around the world, all the so-called Negro descent, right? I'm speaking about them. They not joining the military to be talking about dying for no country, man. It's strictly a business deal, <laughs> right? But they throw them opportunities to the people that's willing to put themselves aside and, you know, be that good old boy that they want. Junior level enlisted service members who have children are amongst those who are impacted the most. According to Feeding America, 29% of junior level enlisted troops face food insecurity in 2020. This is due in part to their low salaries and their frequent relocations, which makes it hard for their non-military spouses to find steady work. Another underlying issue is an agriculture department's rule stopping families in need from being able to access the government assistance program called SNAP, which provides food stamps for low-income families. Senator Tammy Duckworth, a former Black Hawk pilot deployed in Iraq, weighed in on the issue and said it's one of these things that the American people don't know about. We're the mightiest military on the face of the earth, and yet those who are in the lower rung of our military ranks are, if they are married and have a child or two, they're hungry. How can you focus on carrying out the mission and defending our democracy if you're worried about whether or not your kid gets dinner tonight? At this time, Congress is aiming to find avenues to combat the food insecurity issue. Recently, Senator Duckworth sponsored a bill called Basic Needs Allowance, which would allocate funds to military families across the nation who are in desperate need of food and other household items. Reporting in Washington, Ashley Banks. And joining me now to discuss is Tyrell Ventura, host of Watching the Talks. Now, Tyrell, the biggest question that comes out of all of this is how is it possible that so many military families are battling long-term food insecurity in the nation that not only has the largest military on the earth, but also spends the most on its military by far? I mean, why haven't we seen more action taken by the government so far? Because we don't spend money in the military on the soldier. We generally spend money in the military on the bombs or on the higher-ups and on the big ticket items or, you know, throwing money at Lockheed Martin or Raytheon or one of the big defense contractors of the military-industrial complex. Very little of that money actually sees its way down to the soldier unless it's the technology they're carrying that allows them to kill better on the battlefield. And the real truth of this problem is that, look, at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, the military only wants one person. That's the soldier that signed up. The military ultimately doesn't care about that soldier's family or that soldier's kids. Why? Because they only need what they can get out of that one soldier. That's the that's the real truth of it. So, yeah, they're going to pay you a salary, but do they care if you can feed your wife or your kids or your husband or your kids off that salary? No, because they only care about you and what you can do for them at the end of the day. 
Yeah, and it's a sad truth, especially when you're looking at... That's the truth. Just like any job. These folks be talking about we love you and we family and all this, that, and, and the third. But as soon as you do something they don't like, you get injured, right? You, 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 you late too much or whatever it is. All that family stuff go out the window and they show you this is a business, right? But with the military, it's more so like they act like your whole family is a part of the family. But at the end of the day, no, nah. <laughs> no, nah, not really. You either got to die or get injured for your uh, for your people to get involved with your business with the military, right? How much those families do play a role in their lives and how much those soldiers take on. I mean, yes, they're signing up, wanting the pride of being able to say that they are defending their country. But then at the same time, there's a lot that comes with it and a lot that comes with that commitment. Now, I know that a lot of this data is coming from the last year. So how has the pandemic played a role in making the situation worse, specifically for the military members and their families? Well, look around us. I mean, you can look around in your own life and see how the pandemic has played a hardship role in your life in terms of food and, and uh, inflation rising and the access to things with supply chain issues. So that's only going to be exacerbated or, or about the same. You know, if you're if you're someone who's you know living on on uh, if you're a military soldier on active duty or living near a base, I mean, you're gonna they're still going to go through the same problems we all go through. We would expect they wouldn't because they're doing a service for the country. You think that the country Country would step up and try to take care of them and take care of their families. But as I alluded to earlier, at the end of the day, the military, hey, you're the one who signed up. If you decided to have a marriage or a kid, that's not the military's problem at the end of the day. That's your problem. And that's kind of the attitude that I think a lot of us, uh, a lot of the military takes with this kind of thing. And it's also the attitude that's kind of kept this a secret and that's kept this down because nobody wants to step up and say, hey, my family can't eat, but yet I'm serving my country because it's, you know, they don't have that kind of attitude or environment that allows soldiers to speak out like that or uh, they would or allow them to feel confident or uh, and invigorated to speak out about their issues and their problems. The military doesn't breed that kind of thing, especially when you're talking about these soldiers who are, you know, low ranking, you know, E1, E4. That's the bottom of the barrel when it comes to rank in the U.S. military. Yeah, and certainly I know for a lot of them, they may be thinking, hey, this is just a temporary problem. I'm going to keep working and keep trying to get a higher rank to then I won't have to deal with this. But I mean, still, we're talking about food insecurity, one of the most basic aspects of their daily lives. You would think that more would be done or that at least more would be done for those soldiers when it comes to their families. Now, what are the long term impacts here? I mean, we're talking about the families that are struggling, but we're also talking about the prospective recruits who are looking at possibly joining the military. Military, is this likely to keep people from joining if they already have a family or they're looking at having a family because they're concerned that they may not be able to survive as the course of the military is right now? Well, throughout U.S. history, at least recent U.S. history, you know, that's what was a lot of the times the great outlet for a lot of people across this country, young people across this country who, you know, look around and say, you know what, I don't have the same prospects that my rich friends down the road block, you know, down the road from me have. So, you know what, I'm going to join the military because I know they'll provide for me, they'll provide for my family. There's a GI Bill, I can go to college. But now if they're looking around saying, boy, if I accidentally get pregnant while I'm there, or if I get married, or if I already have kids, and I know that at my low rank when I enter, the military can't provide for, for my family, it can only provide for me, ugh, I might not take that route. So I think long term, I think that's a great uh, question and observation on your end, Rachel. Long term, this is going to be a huge problem for recruitment. Because All right. And these folks talking about uh, going to war. With people, man, All right, and the people that they talk about going to war with, and, and this is another factor that they didn't mention. People are waking up to the ways of this place. They are understanding that they go to war with people for one reason that they say, but in actuality, there's a whole nother reason behind these different wars, All right? And I'm speaking to um to the Edomites, man, because they the ones who really be going to war because some other nation did something and they want to go you know, express democracy because they feel like they're the superheroes of the world, right? They are questioning their own military. Just like Rome. This place is just like Rome, right? So this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 16. And 
verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mourners, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Right? The Most High said, the daughter of Babylon, sit down. It's your time. Right? You had a good run, but it's over with. All right, this is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, and verse 19. A good it's a lot. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. That's a promise that the father said will uh, uh, he will ha make happen. Now, a prophecy ain't nothing but a promise of something that the father says will happen, that he will make happen, right? And the most I said. A neighbor shall have no pity upon his neighbor, right? For the lack of bread and great tribulation. It's going to get worse, man. It is going to get worse. And this place deserves every bit of tribulation that the Most High brings upon it. Verse 20 says, Behold, saith the power, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Lebanon, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. The them is us. Right? It says, Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also and recompense in their bosom, thus saith Yahweh power. Right? My right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. Nothing nobody can do can stop it. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, right? Yahweh Ratazah, meaning uh, Yahweh willing, this place is done. All right, so I'm going to end it there. Most High willing, these precepts in this video were edifying. Call Halom Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Yahweh Shalom, y'all, shalom.